Number 9. Coutard and the Wolves of Paris Imagine walking through the streets of 15th century Paris on a freezing winter's night. You're looking forward to having a steaming hot bowl of French onion soup when suddenly you hear a growl. To your terror, you realize that you're being surrounded by a pack of ravenous wolves. This is apparently a true story, and while the details are imperfect, it's still enough to send shivers down your spine. Led by a wolf named Coutard, they accessed the city through gaps in the outer walls which were a couple of centuries old by that point and in bad condition. What does Coutard mean? Well, it actually translates as cheeky, but Coutard and his pack of furry friends were a bit more than that. They tore their way through no less than 40 unlucky Parisians. What were they doing there? The winter that year was so terrible the city was the only place they could find a hot meal. It all ended badly for Coutard and his fellow wolves. The citizens of Paris fought back, hemming them in by the Notre Dame Cathedral and brutally killing them with spears and stones. A hairy encounter to say the least. Have you ever seen a wild wolf in your neighbourhood? What did you do about it? Let me know in the comments below, and if you haven't already, remember to subscribe. Number 8. Complex Creatures It's easy to think of wolves as man-eaters who hunt in packs. Of course, they are naturally dangerous predators, but there are other aspects to them that you probably didn't know. In 2014, the BBC reported on a senior research scientist, Dr David Mesh, who works with the US Geological Survey. He's the go-to guy for all things wolf-related, and he had some interesting stories to tell. For example, wolves overall very rarely attack people. They'll usually fight something that they have a good chance of overpowering, not to take a wild risk against something bigger than them. Dr. Metch studied wolves in the Arctic and realized that the image of the alpha wolf biting and clawing his way to the top isn't too accurate. Wolves are now thought to start their own packs, similar to how humans start a family. They're also quite intelligent animals by his reckoning, who do a lot of planning and thinking ahead. This scientist has been watching wolves for 50 odd years, so he knows what he's talking about. Of course he's seen them do some vicious things too, so don't forget that they are wild animals. Number 7. Ethiopian Wolf This special tiny creature is so beautiful. It wears a beautiful coat tinged with red, and its long, elegant skull is absolutely magnificent. For such a handsome creature, the Ethiopian wolf story is a sad one. Also known as Canis Simenis, or Simeon Fox, its habitat is the highlands of Ethiopia. We've known about them since the early 19th century, and they've been declared an endangered species since the 1930s due to the population being so small. In fact, the Ethiopian wolf is the rarest canine-like species on the planet. There are connections to grey wolves and coyotes, but this particular wolf is of its own distinct species. They have a very particular diet of small rodents, such as rats, though if they come across a baby antelope every now and then, by all accounts they would feast on that as well. The Ethiopian wolves are so few and far between, there are worries they'll go extinct. Sources like the Born Free Foundation believe there could only be a few hundred out there, making them seriously endangered. Thankfully, they seem to know how to watch out for each other, moving in packs that can contain 18 adults. They need to watch their backs, and we need to help them, because once they're gone, they're gone forever. Number 6. Grey Wolf Now, you might be watching this and thinking, I know grey wolves exist. Of course you do, but there are still some facts about this particular animal that will blow you away and make you wonder just what is going on with them. For example, did you know that they're born blind and deaf? Incredible, right? It takes approximately 10 months to raise a grey wolf pup. When sitting down to dinner, a grey wolf is the ultimate example of all you can eat. A grey wolf literally wolfs down 20 pounds or 8 kilograms of food in one meal. That's double the weight of a big bag of flour and around a quarter of their own body mass. The grey wolves at Yellowstone National Park disappeared off the map in the 1920s after humans killed them all. Wolves have a bad reputation with mankind, and we are typically wary of them. In the 1990s, the grey wolf was reintroduced to the park, and so far their population numbers are increasing handsomely. For naturalists and conservationists, this is wonderful news. Number 5. New Guinea Singing Dog It's believed the dogs we see today were at some point wolves running around in the wilderness. The New Guinea Singing Dog isn't a wolf, but it appears to be descended from one. Plus, it's a singing dog, so come on, what's not to like? Known as Canis holstromi, it lives in the rainforest and you'll definitely hear it before you see it. The singing dogs are pretty elusive, so it's lucky that they make such a noise, otherwise we might never know they exist. Described as looking impish in appearance, they have a thick coat which ranges from red to black to tan. If you are lucky enough to see one, it might jump through the air. Bizarrely, this canine has cat-like reflexes. They are very mysterious, and we don't know a whole lot about them. New Guinea singing dogs have been referred to as feral dogs, and even dingoes. One thing that researchers do know is that these dogs are living fossils, who have been on this planet for thousands of years. However, the most iconic talent of these remarkable animals is obviously their singing voice. 
The dogs like to make its group activity a canine choir of sorts. There's far more nuance involved than just random howling though. In boy band style, the animals contribute their own individual styles to the mix. The results won't be making any top 40 radio hit list, but it still makes for a fascinating listen. What do you think? Would you want to have one of these as a pet? Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe while you're there. Number 4. Red Wolf Red wolves have been roaming around our natural world for centuries. Also known as Canis lupus rufus, they have very beautiful fur which is partly coloured cinnamon. That said, these animals aren't exactly sweet, especially if you're a raccoon. Red wolves have been known to eat a few when they get hungry. Smaller than grey wolves, the males are larger than the females. The biggest ones are about 63 inches long or 1.6 meters, with a weight of up to 85 pounds, that's 38 kilograms. And good luck running from one as they hit speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. The remote rural areas of Texas and Louisiana are the best places to try and spot one, out among the swamps and mountains. Red wolves feature prominently in Cherokee mythology, and if we're not careful, they will be consigned to the history books. Labelled as critically endangered since the 1990s, there are a mere 40 of these animals in existence, possibly less. Crazy, huh? The raccoons will be happy, but the planet will be poorer for not having these impressive creatures living wild and free. Number 3. Romeo the Wolf There are some stories involving wolves that are so strange I didn't believe them at first, and this is one of them. But this isn't a story of savagery. Actually, it's quite the opposite. This is a love story, and the star is a handsome devil named Romeo the Wolf. This was a black wolf who appeared in the community of Juneau, Alaska in 2003. The people there were surprised to discover that instead of trying to eat them, this unexpected visitor wanted to be pals. Things heated up when photographer Nick Yans arrived in town, or to be more precise, his golden Labrador Dakota. The wolf formed quite an attachment to Dakota. In fact, he had an eye for many of the lady dogs in the neighborhood by all accounts. It was Nick's wife, Mrs. Yans, who came up with the name. She felt protective over the bonds between this wolf and her dog Dakota, and one day she decided to call him Romeo. Nick and his family developed a bond with Romeo, who dropped by regularly over the years. Sadly, others didn't see him in the same way. Around 2010, he was shot. While the culprits were found and punished, there was no replacing this charismatic canine. Nick was devastated and even wrote a book about his experiences. A memorial service was held and a plaque unveiled in Romeo's honor. What do you think? Would you ever adopt a wolf like Romeo? Let me know by writing a comment below. Number 2. Verkoyansk Wolf Attacks What is the biggest pack of wolves ever seen? That honour was taken by a 400 strong group of wolves over in Russia. The town of Verkoyansk in the region of Yakutia is one of the coldest places on earth. Deep in the northeast of the country, this community found itself invaded by furry visitors, but they weren't looking to be friends. The deep frozen conditions of a remarkable 40 degrees or more below zero meant the wolves didn't have access to their usual food supply. To their horror, the residents realized that they were dealing with a serious threat from Mother Nature. The 400 wolves were eating their way through the town's horse population. A reported 30 met their end as the ravenous pack preyed on the populace. The people decided they had to act fast. Once the horses ran out, they would no doubt be on the menu themselves. Adding to the terrifying nature of this tale was Verkoyansk's place in history. It's also known as Stalin's Death Ring. Why? Because the former leader of the Soviet Union used to send his enemies there to live out their days in frozen misery. No less than 24 teams of hunters were assembled to tackle the eye-popping invasion of the wolves. The bloody end result made it into the Guinness Book of Records, though it must not have been fun for the villagers whilst it was going on. Some outsiders are skeptical, due to a wolf pack usually being 15 strong at the most, never mind into the hundreds. That being said, the natural world does have a way of surprising us. But this isn't even the most remarkable story of wolves out of the former Soviet Union. There's one more even wilder fact and it comes from a spooky deserted place. Number 1. Wolves of Chernobyl The Chernobyl disaster is still etched into the minds of those who experienced it. The shocking nature of the nuclear meltdown means it will never fully escape the public eye. But there is a side to Chernobyl that you might not be aware of. The wildlife. Yes, despite there being dangerous levels of radiation, even decades after the earth-shattering event, life has found a way. And that means wolves. Just because animals are thriving out there in sight of the infamous power station, it doesn't mean that there's not a problem. 2018 saw media reports that grey wolves were fanning out from Chernobyl and into surrounding areas. This is apparently bad news, owing to the mutated genes they've carried inside them over the years. Mutant radioactive wolves? Now that's scary. The grey wolves have been so successful at becoming the dominant species of the area, they understandably want to expand into new territories. Experts were brave enough to put GPS collars onto some of the wolves, and what they discovered was incredible. While the adult wolves kept to their zone, their pups had other ideas. 
One young wolf travels nearly 200 miles. In a strange twist, the GPS tracker stops working so scientists don't even know for sure if he returns to Chernobyl. Scary. Number 10. The Striped Hyena Having a hyena for a pet is not a great idea. It is never a good idea to have an exotic animal for a pet, but hyenas are especially a terrible idea. They are wild animals and can be extremely hostile. However, people do keep hyenas as pets. In the Ethiopian town of Harar, there is a famous pack of hyenas who live near the city and come each night to collect food from a local butcher. While not exactly pets, the hyenas do appear pretty tame. They walk casually through the streets and take photos with tourists. In Nigeria, hyenas are a bit more popular than they are in the United States. If you saw somebody walking a spotted hyena in your local neighborhood, chances are you would call the police. But in Nigeria, there are some who claim hyenas as their pets. According to the Independent, these men take the hyenas from when they are very young, feed them, and integrate them into their community. Of course, this involves a lot of chains and muzzles, but they do learn how to sit on command. The only thing I'll say is the ethics of how this is done may be a little iffy. Number 9. Monkeys Monkeys are adorable. Well, maybe not all monkeys, as some are horribly ugly and terrifying to behold, but other monkeys are quite adorable. I'm talking about the little monkeys that can hang out on your shoulder for anywhere from 20 to 40 years. But taking on a pet is a huge deal and a massive commitment, as they basically live as long as you do. Monkeys also demand an absurd amount of attention. Having a pet monkey is often compared to having a toddler that never grows up. Monkeys are aggressive, they're messy and sometimes even mean, and they will destroy everything in sight. They are also incredibly expensive and it is extremely immoral to rehome a monkey as they become attached to you just like any other child would. But nonetheless, people all around the world have monkeys for pets. You remember the Nigerians and their pet hyenas? Well, they also have baboons. They make the baboons wear football t-shirts while collecting money from spectators who come to see the hyenas and snakes. The monkeys then dance, perform tricks, and scurry back to their masters with their spectators' money. While it would be pretty hard to own a baboon in the United States of America, this example shows just how surprisingly easy it is to house train a monkey. And now, for one that would be pretty awesome to have, but first, be sure to subscribe and tell me about your cool pets in the comments below. Number 8. Anteaters Anteaters are pretty cool. It is no surprise that they are growing in popularity in the United States as pets. In fact, just about any docile animal can be purchased somewhere in the United States for some amount of money, and you bet there's somebody with one in their house, maybe even closer than you think. An anteater will cost you roughly $8,000 to purchase, which is significantly more than a stray cat will cost you, but that is not where the money problems end. Anteaters must have proper enclosures. They are nocturnal and so you can only play with them at night which means you would need to change your sleeping scheduling. When anteaters feel threatened, they will either attack you with their incredibly sharp claws or spray a liquid that is four times nastier than what a skunk sprays. It sprays this liquid out of its anal glands and the result can literally destroy your house for weeks. It's like setting off a can of bear spray. Another big issue with anteaters is they are not social animals. They don't like other anteaters. They don't like dogs and they definitely don't like you. People do own anteaters, but I would really think twice before trying to raise one. Number seven, armadillo. Armadillos are weird. These little armored creatures are far from domesticated and are challenging to take care of in captivity because they are wild animals who need lots of space to roam and dig while they are busying themselves during the night. Generally, they cover at least eight acres of land per night in the wild. But that doesn't stop tons of people from purchasing armadillos and keeping them as pets. Out of the 20 different species of armadillo found in the wild, there are only a few main types that are kept as pets. There's the three-banded armadillo, which includes the southern and Brazilian types, and this is the classic armadillo you're probably thinking of. You know, the one that rolls into a ball. Did you know no other species of armadillo can actually do that? Number 6. Chilean Rose Tarantula Yes. People keep tarantulas as pets. They in fact keep many different types of tarantulas as pets. 
But today, we're talking about the Chilean Rose Tarantula. This thing looks terrifying, and you definitely wouldn't catch me having one in my house. Not with its hairy red legs and evil stare. These hairy spiders originate in the deserts of Chile, Bolivia, and Argentina. They are actually pretty easy to feed as they only eat worms, insects, uh, oh, and small lizards and mammals. This species of tarantula is easily accessible in almost any pet store. They are widely distributed all throughout North America as one of the cheapest wild spiders in the world. They are also very popular with spider hobbyists who like to breed them, according to Spruce Pets. They are relatively docile, they require very little maintenance, and they actually make a pretty good pet. That is, if you prefer spiders and slimy things over dogs and fluffy things, I'll take the fluffy things, like this one coming up next I love. Number 5. Finnick Fox It's true, foxes are becoming the new dogs. People are in love with these cute and cuddly little animals, with all different types being bred in captivity across the world. From the adorable Phoenix Fox to the charming Arctic Fox, there is no denying how ridiculously cute and inquisitive these small creatures are. The Phoenix Fox in particular is positively captivating, with its long whiskers, small bright eyes and enormous ears. The Phoenix Fox is playful just like a dog. They love their owners and they have very high levels of energy. However, Phoenix Foxes can destroy your furniture. They like to urinate on basically everything, and they are fully nocturnal, with most of their energy coming out at night. You better have some patience for this type of pet. Number 4. Wallaroo If you've ever dreamed of having your very own kangaroo, the wallaroo may be the next best thing. For people in North America who don't have kangaroos or wallabies jumping around their properties, wallaroos are an extremely popular pet. The wallaroo is an Australian marsupial, complete with a pouch and is right in the middle in terms of size, coming in smaller than a kangaroo, but larger than a wallaby. Wallaroos can stand on their back legs. They eat just like people with their front paws, and they are pretty adorable with their shaggy fur and bright snouts. Males only weigh about 100 pounds, with females not generally weighing more than 50, which makes them excellent pets, as they are about the same size of a large dog. The only drawback is that they have been banned in most states, but that doesn't stop people from owning them as exotic pets. Despite wallaroos being shy and timid at first, if one is raised by a human, they do bond very strongly to their owner. If they are socialized and treated properly, they can turn into extremely friendly and playful pets. Wallaroos can even understand when you tell them no, though it is recommended to never physically punish a wallaroo or it will develop seriously bad behavioral problems. Number 3. Kinkajou The Kinkajou is one of the strangest pets in the world. They are also known as honey bears, and they have recently become extremely popular in the exotic pet trade. While it may look like a monkey, the Kinkajou is actually a mammal that traditionally dwells in the trees of Central America and South America in the rainforest. They are small, golden brown, and absolutely adorable. Well, at least some people think they are adorable. In fact, you will either find the Kinkajou very adorable, are very ugly. There really is no middle ground with this bizarre mammal. Even in captivity, a kinkajou can be friendly and playful and a curious little explorer. The only issue is that they often become aggressive with their owners. They have very sharp claws that can become a real problem if they decide to attack. They also require a fantastic amount of room for their continuous exercise. This is a seriously high maintenance pet that requires lots of commitment from the owner. As with many exotic pets, it is sad to say that many of these creatures end up being traded, sold, and living a pretty miserable life before eventually being euthanized. This is always something to consider before purchasing an unusual pet. They are often trafficked, neglected, and if you don't have the skills to raise it, you are better off just leaving it in the jungle where it'll be happy and safe. Number 2. Stick Insect Stick insects are definitely a weird pet. You can't take it for a walk you can't really do anything with it, and you basically just sit around staring at it while it hangs out on a leaf. Nonetheless, these are seriously popular pets, and in fact, there are over 2,500 different species of stick insects. The most common household pets are Indian stick insects, and they require an outstanding amount of care when you are handling one, or they could break, but they are pretty tame and will sit on your hand placidly. The good thing about stick insects is 
they don't require much maintenance. You can leave them alone for weeks without having to do anything, and they are pretty neat to show to your friends. Stick insects are naturally nocturnal, meaning they are basically only active at night. You will notice that during the day, a stick insect doesn't move at all. Why anyone would pay money to have a stick in a cage is beyond my comprehension, but it definitely happens, and there are definitely some people out there that'll go nuts over stick insects. Number 1. Sloth Sloths are one of my all-time favorite animals, and I'm not the only one. Seeing as two-toed sloths are dramatically rising in their popularity as exotic pets, sloths are calm, they always seem to be smiling, and they are very snuggly creatures. One of the best things about having a sloth for a pet is you don't have to worry about it defecating anywhere as they generally climb down out of their tree to poop once a week. That's even better than owning a cat. Plus, sloths can live for about 30 years. This means you and the sloth are going to be friends for most of your life. These are not pets that you can give away or rehome easily. Surprisingly, sloths are actually fairly adaptable as house pets. The only problem is that they need lots of trees to climb. You can't really keep a sloth in your house as they must have trees. Sloths are only suitable for people who have lots of space and lots of experience with exotic pets. There's also a big difference between the two-toed sloths and the three-toed sloths, the latter of which make terrible pets and hate living in captivity. If you have ever thought about getting a sloth for a pet, you may be disappointed by the fact that they don't like to be petted. They don't like to be bathed, and they certainly don't like to be groomed. Number 9. Assassin Bug Assassin bugs have long, straw-like beaks that they use to stab their prey into the grave. When they're not stabbing their opponents with it, they keep their beak hidden beneath their bodies. But they are passively waiting for something to fly by. They're jumping from plant to plant, hunting for any insect that gives them a nasty look. Once they catch their prey, it's pretty much game over. They're strong enough to hold most of their prey with their front legs, and while they keep them restrained, assassin bugs stab their sorry prey repeatedly with their beaks and insert it into their bodies. But it doesn't stop there. They inject their prey with a dose of toxic venom, which then turns their prey's inside into a liquid mush. Then they suck it out with their beaks and move on to their next victim. See why they're named the uh, assassin bug now? They can lift the tip of their abdomen as if their butt were in the air to warn you that they can hurt you. That posture is used by a lot of insects that sting when they are under threat. So if you ever come across that insect, remember that it will be warning you not to mess with it. There are many places in North America where you can find assassin bugs, and sometimes they even travel in packs. And while they are terrifying, they're actually pretty good at keeping garden insect populations under control. But it's still creepy to think about their ruthless methods to obtaining and killing their prey. Number 8. Coletta Silk Moth Caterpillar Coletta Silk Moth butterflies are beautiful, but their caterpillars are some of the most exotic and distinctively colored caterpillars in the world. Just take a look at the Coletta Silk Moth Caterpillar. Its body is a beautiful shade of bluish green, but that's certainly not its most notable feature. Rather, your eyes are drawn to the blue and black spikes that pattern its body. While beautiful, they definitely don't look safe to touch. If that's what you thought, then you'd be right. And that's what many of its potential predators think as well. Not only are these spiky parts of the caterpillar's body poisonous, but when they're touched, they separate from its body and stick into yours. This is a natural defense mechanism that this caterpillar has to fend off those that would have it as a snack. The reason that they're so brightly colored is precisely because of this poison coursing through their veins. When these caterpillars become butterflies, they give up their colorful past and become a starkly covered but equally gorgeous black and white butterfly. You can spot these butterflies and caterpillars in the southwest regions of the United States and Mexico. Have you ever seen these caterpillars before? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 7. Red Palm Weevil from up close, the red palm weevil might look like he's going into a boxing match, but these odd-looking bugs are actually fighting a much bigger kind of fight. These weevils lay larvae inside of trees, and these can leave holes around three feet long. In many cases, the plants cannot survive this kind of damage, and when you multiply that damage by the number of them having kids, it's no wonder that the red palm weevil is considered such a big pest. 
How do these weevils inflict their damage? Well, females will lay eggs inside the soft tissue of date plants, palm trees, and coconut trees. Many of these trees grow on palm plantations. The larvae that hatch within the space will burrow deep into the plants, where the females can then lay more eggs. After enough iterations of this process, the plant is so damaged that it eventually dies. On a large scale, this can cost a ton of money. For one thing, you have to get rid of all the plants that the red palm weevil killed, and then you have to replace all of those, and then you have to make sure that the other damaged trees are cured. It's really just a giant mess. Thankfully, there are methods for dealing with these boxing bugs, but folks should be on the lookout so that they can prevent their spread. Number six, Filbo weevil. Filbo weevils are tiny pests with strangely long noses. Maybe they've been lying a lot like Pinocchio and their noses have just kept getting bigger and bigger. Seriously, this thing looks like it makes up most of the filbert weevil's body. These big feeder noses come in handy when they want to eat their preferred snacks, acorns. These weevils are noted as big pests because they can cause a serious amount of damage to oak trees and their acorns. In fact, not only do filbert weevils eat acorns, but they also lay their eggs inside of them as well. In particular, they look for acorns that are still in early developmental stages and lay most of their eggs in them. When these eggs hatch, the larvae survive on the kernel until they're big enough to burrow outside, eating what they dig along the way, and making their own path in the world. Of course, this causes a lot of damage to the acorns, and many of them fall to the ground and die before they even get a chance to fully grow. Because of these factors, many people try to stay on the lookout for filbert weevils, but it can be hard to spot them because they're so small. Number five, Australian walking stick. Australian walking sticks are well named because they look like, well, walking sticks, and they come from Australia. The shapes of their bodies might remind you a lot of a praying mantis, but they aren't a part of the same family, strangely enough. One of the most notable features that the Australian walking sticks have are their curved tails, which is an evolutionary adaptation that these walking sticks develop to look like a tree branch or a leaf. These insects are also pretty large, and they can grow up to 8 inches long, although the females tend to be bigger than the males. The males are skinny and have wings, while the females have thicker bodies and fake wings that cannot fly. These walking sticks mostly feed on eucalyptus leaves, and because of that, they also tend to live in eucalyptus trees. By that logic, I should live inside of a pizza place. Australian walking sticks are also known for shedding its skin as it gets bigger, and sometimes they'll even eat their leftover skins. Because of their size and centralized locations, they're often hunted by birds and reptiles, but their camouflaged bodies make them able to conceal themselves among the leaves of the eucalyptus trees. Did you know that its Latin name, and I'm going to give this my best shot here, Pseudophosmitidae, means ghost? This is a tribute to its excellent camouflage skills. Number 4. Brazilian Treehopper The Brazilian treehopper has perhaps the most peculiar set of headgear among any insect in the animal kingdom. Take a look. A stalk-like appendage emerges from the top of their heads, and out of this stalk there are four hairy orbs that always hang over this treehopper's head like an umbrella. If you're looking for a good Halloween costume this year, then this insect's crown is sure to scare everyone you encounter. This array of orbs atop the Brazilian treehopper's head is in general referred to as a pronotum, a kind of structure shared by many insects. And scientists have had some trouble determining what its purpose could be. It can't be something that might show off to one another because both males and females have this pronotum. And it probably doesn't have anything to do with their psyching out their predators because it doesn't seem like these predators are phased by it. Scientists now think that their pronotum evolved so as to look similar to the buds of the fungus known as Ophicordyceps unilateralis. This fungus is highly poisonous. When ants eat them, its buds tear straight through their bodies and create similar orb-like structures. Naturally, predators don't want to eat this, so the Brazilian treehopper remains alive. Number 3. Scorpion Fly It's a bird! It's a fly! It's a scorpion! You wouldn't think it could be possible, but the scorpion fly is a fly with a strange appendage on its body that looks a lot like a scorpion stinger. Thankfully, this is not actually a stinger at all. 
but rather a part of this fly's reproduction apparatus. But that doesn't make the prospect of being chased by a flying scorpion any less terrifying, especially when you consider just how much this scorpion fly's reproduction organs looks like a stinger. It even has a pointed bulge at its end that looks just like the pointed end of a stinger, but it won't harm you at all. Male scorpion flies use this organ to fertilize female eggs after their ornate courting process. In fact, females don't have the pointed bulge at the end of their stingers at all. However, don't mistake that for a lack of strength. Mating can be dangerous game for the male, who could easily be killed by the female. It's for this reason that he'll give her a dead insect, a real feast for these insects. What would you think if your suitor gave you this as a gift? There are a ton of these around in the world, so keep an eye out. Number two, giant burrowing cockroach. The giant burrowing cockroach is, well, gigantic. In fact, it can weigh nearly 35 grams, which is about the same size as a golf ball. In addition, they can grow up to eight centimeters long. In terms of mass, that makes this cockroach the biggest one in the world. It should come as no surprise that this giant lives mostly in Queensland, Australia. It seems like every comically huge animal lives there. However, these cockroaches aren't pests like the many other cockroaches you know. They don't have wings, so they're not flying around bugging you. In fact, they're a pretty integral part of Queensland's ecosystem. Oftentimes, they'll burrow underground about three feet deep and collect dry leaves and other organic matter, which they eat and recycle back into the world. They're the only cockroaches in the world who can call one burrow their home for their entire lives. They're pretty forceful, however, often fighting with other males, sending them tumbling around. They're also known for a distinctive hissing sound that they make during fights and mating. However, they can't hurt humans. Because of this, they make very popular pets. They're not hard to take care of and they move really slowly because of their large size. An interesting fact is that they can live between 10 and 14 years, which is a long time for a bug. Would you like to have a giant burrowing cockroach as a pet? Leave in your comments below. Number one, Hercules beetle. Hercules beetles are some of the biggest beetles in the world, but they're perhaps best known for their insane strength. Some scientists have reported that the Hercules beetle is capable of lifting around 850 times its body weight. If humans could lift 850 times our own weight, we'd be able to lift things at the order of around 150,000 pounds. They can grow to be around 7 inches long, and even their larva can weigh over 100 grams. These beetles are also equipped with a large pair of horns at the top of their heads. Given that they are a subspecies of rhino beetles, that makes sense. In fact, these horns tend to make up for around a third of a Hercules beetle's body length but can grow to be even longer than the beetle itself. These horns come in handy during mating season, when males try to fight off other males in order to mate. During these fights, the males often try to grab their opponents with their horns and throw them. These fights can lead to serious damage, even for the females. They're very visible, so they stay safe by going out only at night and hiding behind plants. Crazily enough, these beetles are pretty popular pets in Asia, even though they can be pricey and they only live to be a few months old. The horns are dangerous in battle, but not to humans, so you can hold one in your hand if you're brave. Even if you aren't from Japan, you probably know that these beetles are considered good luck charms and symbols of strength. Number 10. Frozen Pup In eastern Siberia, a frozen pup was recently discovered by locals. While unclear whether the puppy is a dog or a wolf, there is no doubt that this is one ancient canine. It was found in permafrost in the far eastern edge of Russia in Yakutsk. According to a report by the New York Times, this frozen pup is 18,000 years old, but it looks like it could have been someone's beloved pet practically yesterday. It had been buried for thousands of years inside a lump of frozen mud. But the most interesting thing about this incredibly well-preserved frozen animal is that scientists believe it could help them to understand the connection between modern dogs and ancient wolves. Scientists were pretty shocked with this find, as it's not every day scientists discover frozen animals complete with their fur, skeleton, teeth, and even whiskers totally attached. Scientists named him Doggo, which means friend in the Yakut language. DNA testing has shown that the little puppy was a male, but even after two rounds of testing, it was still too hard to say whether he was a dog or a wolf. He may have been an ancestor to both. 
As the ice melts, more and more animals are being found. In 2016, a 12,400 year old puppy that still had its brain, heart, lungs and stomach intact was found near the same region as Doggall in the village of Tamat. Regardless of whether Little Doggall was a dog or a wolf, the find is equally exciting and scientists are hoping to unravel the mystery of when and how dogs became our best friend. Number 9. 42,000 year old foal If you thought 18,000 years was too much, check out this 42,000 year old foal recently discovered completely frozen in ice. A foal is a baby horse, and this bizarre ancient animal was found contained in ice inside the Batagaika crater yet again in eastern Siberia. Scientists believe the colt was between one and two weeks old when it died, and similar to our frozen pup, the foal drowned in mud and was then frozen. Even more interesting than a frozen horse is the fact that this foal still had liquid blood in its veins even after all these years. This is incredibly rare, as blood typically turns to powder over thousands of years. In fact, this is only the second example of an Ice Age animal being found with liquid blood. It was only the year before, in 2018, when scientists extracted liquid blood from an ancient mammoth carcass. But because the mammoth was only believed to be about 32,200 years old, this new foal has given scientists the oldest blood ever found on Earth. Which sounds like a line from a vampire movie, but it's true, and it's incredibly rare. But besides these discoveries, the frozen permafrost kept other liquids well preserved, like urine inside the bladder. Pretty amazing when you think about it. Who knew scientists could learn so much with all these fluids? The species of this animal is known as the Lena horse, Equus caballus lenensis, and researchers have been joining forces to try and clone this species to bring it back to life. They argue that blood is not enough, since red blood cells have no nucleus and therefore do not carry DNA. However, they are targeting the cells and organs, but even there it is a challenge to find the DNA in optimal conditions. Now on to number 8, but first, what do you think about bringing back prehistoric animals? Would you like to see this ancient horse running around? Let me know in the comments below. Number 8. Frozen Siberian Bird This next frozen animal is a bird. That's right, an ordinary bird, preserved in ice for 46,000 years. If you want to get specific about it, this bird is a horned lark. It was discovered in northeast Siberia by fossil hunters, and scientists believe this single bird will help them to understand how exactly the ecosystem evolved at the brink of the last ice age. According to an article published in the journal Communications Biology, scientists extracted DNA from this frozen bird carcass and discovered it to be female. This discovery is now giving scientists new information about the dry biome that once covered northern Europe and Asia several thousand years ago. Supposedly, this area was divided into three different biological environments when the Ice Age came to a halt about 11,700 years ago. While this sounds like a lot of mumbo-jumbo science talk, basically the frozen Siberian bird shines a light on how these different biomes operated all those years ago. If you're still not interested, this particular part of the world is where the woolly mammoths and woolly rhinoceroses used to call home. The once uniform landscape divided into a tundra, a coniferous forest and a steppe. Today, there are two subspecies of horned lark, one that lives in the far north of Eurasia and another in southern Mongolia. It seems like they've been populating the earth for thousands of years. Unbelievable! And now for number 7, but first, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let me know what animal from the past you wish was still around. Number 7. Yukigir Bison Enough of the small animals, it's time to start talking about some big fellas. The next animal I'll tell you about is the Yukigir bison, which was discovered frozen back in 2011. Scientists believe that this was the best preserved bison of its age, which dates back all the way to about 10,500 years ago. Back in his day, this bison would have weighed around 1,300 pounds, that's 600 kilograms, and stood six feet tall. They found it in a position that suggests it was asleep when it died, it had no injuries and likely perished of natural causes. Although remains of other steppe bison have been discovered over the years, researchers argue that none have been preserved as well as the so-called Yukigir bison, which was found with its internal organs almost completely intact. These bison were nothing new to the area at the end of the last ice age. The steppe bison had been living in northern Europe, North America and Asia starting about 2 million years ago and ending when the Ice Age finished 12,000 years before today. When picturing a bison in your mind, you are probably thinking of a normal American bison, but the one that was found frozen is significantly larger than a modern bison. It has bigger horns and even a secondary hump on its back, kind of like a camel. Images of this bison have been found in cave art throughout Europe, even so far west as in France. Number 6. Colima Woolly Rhinoceros We have all heard of the woolly mammoth. But how many people are aware that there was once a horde of woolly rhinoceros freely roaming around the world? Not only was the woolly rhinoceros roaming through eastern Siberia near the end of the last ice age, 
but their remains have even been discovered as far west as Britain. And according to scientists, woolly rhinoceroses were one of the most abundant giant mammals of their time. Although today we have found very few remains. In a report by Science Direct, they discuss how the most well-preserved woolly rhino remains were found frozen in 2007 by a group of gold miners during the opening of a gold mine in Siberia. When it was still alive, this woolly rhinoceros is estimated by researchers to have weighed about 1.5 tons. Unlike the rhinos of today that we know and love with their grey, leather-like flesh, this rhino would have had thick fur, a fluffy tail, narrow ears and a pair of horns. An important finding related to their adaption tells us about their short legs that refer to a struggle with increasing snow. While most of the internal organs were decayed and gone, the stomach and its contents were still there. Researchers managed to find evidence of grass and sagebrush in the woolly rhino's stomach. It's strange to imagine such a fearsome beast roaming about eating nothing but grass, and it's also hard to imagine how it ended up frozen in a gold mine. Have you ever heard of these woolly rhinos? Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. Celerican Pony the Celerican pony is another frozen animal uncovered in the icy region of Siberia and was yet again discovered by gold miners. It seems that more gold miners are finding frozen evidence of ancient animals than actual archaeologists. The miners discovered the pony thanks to its tail and two legs sticking through the roof of a rocky tunnel they were digging through, roughly 9 metres below completely frozen ground. This was back in 1968, but it is still one of the rarest finds of frozen animals. The pony, which is properly known as Shavaski's horse, now only found in the wilds of Mongolia, must have lived between 35,000 and 39,000 years ago. Researchers believe the horse would have only been around 8 years old when it died, and because they found its gastrointestinal tract completely full, evidence suggests quick death. Because of the strange position in which the horse was found, scientists theorise that it had died after becoming stuck in something like a bog or swamp. Basically, this ancient pony fell, got stuck in a bog, and remained frozen under the ground for nearly 40,000 years before a couple of Russian gold miners stumbled upon it. What a weird life story! Well, at least he was found, and he'll certainly have a lot to contribute to animal history. Number 4. Yuka Mammoth You undoubtedly came here to hear about frozen mammoths, and I won't let you down. The story I'm going to tell you now is about Yuka, the frozen corpse of a woolly mammoth discovered in 2009 by Yuka Gear tribe members in the Yakutia region of Russia. It seems that Siberia will take the discovery of all these frozen animals. The mammoth was discovered with its skin and some of its blonde fur extremely well preserved, as well as some of its muscle tissue and ligaments. But what was extremely unusual about this frozen mammoth was its trunk was still totally intact. Researchers believe the animal was about 10 years old when it died, which was about 39,000 years ago. Before the discovery of this frozen mammoth, nobody knew precisely what 10-year-old mammoths were like as almost all preserved remains were that of adults. The researchers were very surprised to see that the animal had been growing tusks that had yet to break through its skin. Due to some unhealed cuts on the yucca mammoth, it is believed that the animal was attacked by a predator, most likely a lion. Others claim that they were possibly made by human hunters, who used to steal from other predators, even today. If it is confirmed that these marks were made by hunters, it would be the first evidence of interaction between humans and mammoths. This would be really amazing. Let's hope it happens. Number 3. Unfortunate Fox This poor and unfortunate fox is the strangest ice cube you will ever see. According to a report by the BBC, back in 2017, a hunter found a deceased fox fully encased in ice in the wilderness in Germany, and has since put it on display at his family's hotel. According to a local news agency, the man found the block of ice with the animal inside it beside the Danube River in January 2017. The hunter believes that the fox drowned somehow and then was frozen solid because of the freezing temperatures. This is no surprise to anyone who's been to Europe for any reason in winter, as they do appear to be getting more and more extreme with worse and worse weather. In fact, Europe is getting so cold that this same hunter claims he saw a frozen deer and a frozen wild boar, and that the fox he put on display at his family hotel was the third frozen animal he found in the region. What a peculiar way to die! Number 2. Alaskan Moose Battle Yes, the plural for moose is indeed moose. This story is about two moose locked in a deadly battle and then completely frozen solid inside a lake. This happens near the remote village of Unicleet, Alaska, back in 2016. It is an absolutely astonishing sight. The discovery was made by a teacher who had been showing their friend around a nearby volunteer camp when they came upon the scene. The moose were first discovered with their antlers sticking up above the ice. It was later reasons that the animals must have been fighting over a lady moose. But as you can likely imagine, none of these strong male moose got to do any kind of mating. They both got dragged into the river with their antlers locked together and ended up frozen in the centre of the lake. Talk about a couple of moose gladiators. Number 1. Cave Lion Twins 
What is cooler than a lion? How about a cave lion? Or how about two frozen cave lion cubs discovered in the frosty region of Siberia? Yes, after two trips out of Siberia, we're back there. A pair of cave lion cubs took the scientific community by storm after they were discovered in Siberia back in 2015. These twin pups, or kitties maybe, that only lived a day or two, had been trapped in the permafrost for 55,000 years, long before the last ice age ended. What makes these cubs especially cool is that they almost could have been used in a bizarre experiment to revive their lost species, which had been the largest cat species in the world. Because the little lions were so young, researchers were hoping to discover traces of their mother's milk inside their stomachs. However, the tiny little cubs were unfortunately killed before they ever had a chance to feed. This is the end of this incredibly depressing discovery. Number 9. Komodo Dragon Komodo dragons are some of the most notorious lizards in the world. They're somewhere around 40 million years old, where they first live in the Lesser Sunda Islands of Indonesia. Around 900,000 years ago, they arrived in Australia as well, and got even bigger. Even though they're not the oldest animal species, they sure do look like it. They're living fossils because the Komodo dragons that are currently alive today look an awful lot like those we've seen in the fossil records, even if they are a bit larger. How large, you ask? Well, the Komodo dragon is the world's largest lizard. They can grow up to 10 feet long and they tend to weigh around 330 pounds. They'll also eat whatever they can get their hands on. They're even infamous for taking down water buffalo. Their bites are loaded with toxic venom, enabling them to take down big game. Even if their prey is able to get away, these dragons will follow their now slowed prey scent until they're worn out, at which time the Komodo has its meal. A super cool fact is that Komodo dragons sometimes vomit when they feel threatened because, with an empty stomach, they can run faster. Number 8. Amami Rabbit Around 10 to 20 million years ago, the Amami Rabbit made it to Amami and Takuno, two tiny islands in Japan, to become the first rabbits within that region. Since there were no other rabbits there to compete for food, they pretty much stayed the same as they were when they arrived. So this 20 million year old rabbit species holds the title for the world's most primitive ancient rabbit. If you give it a look, you can tell immediately that it's ancient. It has odd woolly fur on its body and a strangely shaped skull and curly talons at the end of its paws. Their method of communication is also unique for rabbits. They employ various clicks and clacks to tell their brethren what's going on. However, Amami rabbits are heavily endangered even though they've been given special designations by the Japanese government. One of their most vicious predators is the Indian mongoose, which isn't even a species endemic to Amami. These mongooses were released into the island to control the population of pit vipers. It looks like it's working, but much to the detriment of the Amami rabbit, they've been eating them as well. I guess nobody told them that they were only supposed to eat the pit vipers. Number 7. Platypus the ever-inscrutable platypus was recently discovered to be one of the oldest mammals on the planet. When scientists investigated the platypus's genome, they found that its DNA extended back to around 166 million years ago, making it one of the first mammals to split off from the long line of reptiles. Because of this, the platypus is an excellent reminder of our ancient past, even if it is a little strange. When scientists first looked at the platypus, they thought that somebody was playing a joke on them. How else could they be looking at a creature that was apparently part otter, part duck, and part beaver's tail? They have webbed feet, large billed heads, fur on their bodies, and the guys among their species even deploy venom, which they can deploy with their claws once they retract their webbing. Also, they're the only mammal other than the echidna which is known to lay eggs. However, some things have changed during their 166 million years on Earth. In particular, the fossil records show that the early platypuses were around twice as big as the contemporary platypuses. The old ones could grow up to a meter long. Have you ever seen this 3-in-1 animal in real life? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 6. Chevrotain Chevrotains are often referred to as mouse deer but they are neither deer nor mice. Rather, they have their own classification. 
Tragular Day, I think is what it's called. We're going to go with that one. What's pretty neat is they only weigh a few pounds. They tend to be about as big as rabbits. They're some of the oldest ruminants in the world, meaning that they digest their food the same way that deer do. But unlike deer, their stomachs only have three chambers. In fact, given that their appearance is similar to that of other relatively modern creatures, it's startling just how crude some of the Chevrotain's features are. They only have four toes, noses that are closer to pig's noses than anything else, and itty bitty legs. These animals have been around for some 30 million years and during their tenure on Earth, they haven't changed with the times. Because they tend to hang out by themselves and only come out at night, scientists actually have a lot to learn about these idiosyncratic creatures. There are even some species of chevrotain that can hold their breath for around 4 minutes to escape their predators. They are very small if you compare them in size to a deer. This makes these munchkins able to avoid being the prey of big predators. Number 5. Purple Frog When researchers first came upon the illustrations of the purple frog in 2003, they described it as a bloated donut with stubby legs and a pointed snout. Not quite high praise, but accurate nonetheless. It's a slimy, rotund creature. It's even been called the pig-nosed frog. These scientists just want to bring this frog down a pig. At least its age gives it some dignity. It's been around for almost a hundred million years. The only place that you can find purple frogs are in India, and their nearest relatives hail from the Seychelles Islands. This is what gives us evidence that they've been around for so long. The only way that these two relatives could be found in these desperate places is because Seychelles India and Madagascar were once all one big great plot of land. Around a hundred million years ago, that is. Since then, these frogs have been evolving in India independently. Purple frogs are a burrowing species, and they stay under the earth at all times except for two to three weeks during the monsoon season, when it emerges looking for love. Many communities eat their tadpoles, and when this is combined with rampant deforestation, that makes purple frogs an endangered species. But it's incredible to think that they've made it this long. Hopefully they'll make it another hundred million. What do you think about this particular frog? It's really slimy. Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. Coelacanth Most scientists thought that the ancient fish known as the coelacanth had gone extinct at the same time as the dinosaurs. However, in 1938, a South African museum curator found the first live coelacanth that the world had ever seen, with a random catch of fish no less. This meant that the ancient fish had made it through whatever took out the dinos. However, a lot had changed in between the ancient coelacanths and the one that showed up in that net. They're old, but they're not that bright. In fact, the coelacanth's brain makes up only a mere 1.5% of its cranium, and the rest of it is just fat. Even though they're not big-brained, we probably have a lot to learn from these ancient fish. For a long time, Scientists thought that the coelacanth was an ancestor of the first group of fish that sprouted legs and went on to land, but recent research suggests otherwise. In between them and us, there is something that escaped the sea. We don't have too many live specimens, nor fossils of these fish, so it's hard to determine how exactly they've evolved over the years. They're both hard to find because they live so deep under the sea. They've been found living around 2,300 feet deep and their ancient visage is sure to shock. They can weigh almost 200 pounds and grow up to 6.5 feet long. How'd you like to run into one of those while swimming? Did you know that coelacanths have a really long gestation period? Well, just imagine being pregnant for about three years. Number three, Tuatara. The Tuatara looks like a dead ringer for a lizard, but it's actually in a class entirely its own. Belonging to a unique order referred to as Phentodontia, while there were tons around during the dinosaur age, there are only two kinds of Tutara left in the world, but in the 200 million years that they've been around, they haven't really changed. Seeing lizards and crocodiles around indeed brings dinosaurs to mind, but Tutara are closer to dinosaurs than any of those creatures. Unfortunately, there are not many of these prehistoric creatures left in the world, of those that are still alive, they are relegated to a couple of islands around New Zealand. 
the good news is that the ones that still exist can live up to 200 years and even become parents when they are 110 years old like Henry, a New Zealand to Atara. Their lifestyles might have something to do with their age. Most of the time, they live a life of leisure. They like to go sunbathing or hang out in their burrows, just chilling out. When the sun goes down, they start to go after their prey, which consists mostly of beetles and other bugs. However, they can go fast if they need to. They just don't want to, it seems. Just a curious fact about this species before we go to number two. The sex of a tuatara is determined by the temperature that the egg experiences. Really funny, isn't it? Just imagine that in summer, more men would be born and in the winter, more women. That would be a bit complicated. Number two, ghost shark. Ghost sharks or elephant sharks haven't changed a lot throughout their 400 million year evolution. And when you look at one, you might have the sneaking suspicion that you're not looking at a shark at all. That's correct. The ghost shark is actually not a shark. Rather, it comes from a group of fish called a ratfish. These so-called ratfish and sharks split off from a common ancestor somewhere around 400 million years ago. Not only is the ghost shark old, but it hasn't changed that much in that period. Biologists at the Institute of Molecular and Cell Biology recently conducted a study on its genome and discovered that it has undergone far less evolutionary change than all of the other vertebrates which they think came from the same ancestor. That's why the ghost shark holds the record for the world's slowest evolved creature. Ghost sharks are notable for their almost squid-like appearance, with eyes near the tops of their heads and a big protrusion on their snouts. These large noses actually come in handy though. The ghost shark will use it to scour the sandy ocean floor looking for prey. Moreover, the snout is well attuned to its environment, capable of detecting motion and electric fields. Number 1. Horseshoe Crab Horseshoe crabs might look a lot like crabs, but you'd be mistaken. In fact, spiders are nearer in the family trees than all other animals. You wouldn't think that ocean dwellers with huge shells would be rubbing shoulders at the family reunion with everyone's favorite eight-legged freaks, but a few biologists from the University of Wisconsin-Madison recently verified this weird fact. This means that biologists need to rethink how spiders and other arachnids evolved. That's not where the eccentricity of these strange animals ends either. They're one of the oldest living fossils in the world. They've been around for an estimated 445 million years, which predates most of the life that we know of today. What's more, during that time, they haven't really changed much at all. The fossils we found look by and large the same as the ones that are swimming around in our oceans. Besides, their blood runs blue because of the copper that exists inside of their hemocyanin, which is a kind of protein that these creatures use to transmit oxygen within their blood. This blood is also the only source of a vital pharmaceutical chemical called Limulus amoebocyte lysate, which can discover whether or not certain drugs contain the bacterial toxin endotoxin a type of toxin that makes its way into vaccines, injectable drugs, and other pharmaceutical products. I was actually fortunate enough to be able to pet some horseshoe crabs just a couple of months ago. The thing that surprised me the most about them is they actually wanted to be petted. They would come right up to you and everything. Really cool. If you're on the coast of North America or near the Gulf of Mexico, you will probably come across this species. Have you ever seen one? And if you have, did they come up to you to get petted like me? Let me know in the comments below. This has been it for today. Thanks again for watching. Number 10. Miami, USA Few things in nature leave more devastation in its wake than a hurricane. And few places on Earth are quite as prone to these horrifying acts of natural destruction as Miami, Florida. Anyone who lives in Florida knows just how devastating hurricane season can be. Nobody knows when the next windstorm will level the city or fill it with floodwaters. According to the US Geological Survey, it is estimated that the southern tip of Florida will suffer over 60 hurricanes in every 100-year period. In 2008 alone, Miami was ranked as the most dangerous city in terms of natural disasters in all of the United States. But this is not new information. Hurricanes destroy parts of Florida all the time. For example, in 1926, the Great Miami Hurricane destroyed almost every building in downtown Miami and killed over 350 people. Then there was the Labor Day Hurricane of 1935, which killed over 400 people. The horrible truth is that hurricanes will never stop plaguing Miami. 
Its geographic position makes it one of the most dangerous places on Earth, and the worst part is that no one knows when the next hurricane is going to come or how much damage it will bring. Have you ever been in the path of a hurricane? What happened? Did you lose electricity? Did your house flood? Let me know in the comments below. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. You won't want to miss all the awesome videos coming out every week with important information you didn't know you wanted to know. Number 9. Java and Sumatra, Indonesia The islands of Java and Sumatra in Indonesia face persistent natural disasters. This is another one of the most unfortunate places to live in the entire world. Indonesia as a whole is incredibly dangerous for all kinds of natural reasons. There isn't just one type of force that threatens this beautiful country. Indonesia, and specifically Java and Sumatra, are constantly under threat from floods, droughts, landslides, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and tsunamis. In 2004, tragically, a tsunami hit Indonesia and killed nearly 250,000 people. This was after a 9.1 magnitude earthquake triggered the massive wave. But disaster doesn't need to come in huge incidents. There are smaller disasters that happen all the time and inflict just as much pain and suffering. Even before that infamous 2004 tsunami, droughts had killed almost 10,000 Indonesians. Volcanoes killed nearly 20,000 and earthquakes killed over 20,000. You have probably heard of the volcano Krakatoa, which is located in Indonesia. This volcano is one of the most dangerous and it seems to erupt frequently enough to be a menace to society around it. A famous past eruption in 1883 was so massive that it destroyed the islands and created global effects that changed weather patterns worldwide. Even as recently as a few years ago, floods drove thousands of citizens in West Java from their homes while a landslide completely decimated the village of Tenjolia. If you do visit Java or Sumatra, be careful. A little planning and caution goes a long way. Number 8. Istanbul, Turkey Istanbul was once called Constantinople, and for centuries it was known as a cultural and commercial centre of the world. This ancient city holds many world wonders, including one of the oldest marketplaces in the world. And if you didn't know the exact location of Istanbul, it is a metropolis sitting right on the border between Europe and Asia. It is also, incidentally, located on the North Anatolian Fault. Though it may not be immediately alarming for most people, this particular fault is definitely going to rupture sometime in the future. And the earthquake that results from such a rupture would be horrifying for the estimated 13 million people living in Istanbul. In an article from Bloomberg, a geologist puts the chance of it happening in the next 30 years between 35 and 40 percent. That's pretty scary. But it wouldn't be the first natural disaster to devastate the area. The last big earthquake happened in 1999. A 7.6 magnitude earthquake absolutely decimated the city of Izmit, killing around 17,000 people. However, other estimates put that number more likely around 45,000. Researchers currently believe that the fault beneath Istanbul could result in several smaller earthquakes or one massive earthquake without warning. All anybody knows is that Istanbul is a ticking time bomb waiting for a natural disaster. Number 7. Guatemala South of Mexico is the Central American country of Guatemala. While there are certainly dangers associated with criminal activity in this region of the world, the entire country is actually much more at risk from a natural disaster. This is mainly due to Guatemala's strange topography. This is one of the only countries in the world that is made up entirely of hills, mountains and general uneven landscape. The country has extremely mountainous terrain, which causes landslides and mudslides that devastate rural areas. It also makes rescue efforts extremely difficult when earthquakes and hurricanes strike. Back in 1976, a massive earthquake killed 23,000 Guatemalans, and because of the country's dangerous topography, search and rescue efforts were seriously hampered. And even if Guatemala is not a direct target of a hurricane, the rainfall is enough to cause mudslides that can kill hundreds of people indiscriminately. The entire country is full of small rural villages where mudslides are particularly dangerous. Back in 2005, when Hurricane Stan struck southern Mexico and Central America, there were over 900 mudslides in Guatemala, some of which buried entire villages under the mud. It's truly sad, because many of the people who live in the affected areas have little money and few resources, and basically no way to recover their lives once a natural disaster hits. Number 6. The Sahel Region, Africa Drought is something people don't really think much about as being a natural disaster. Hurricanes and volcanoes are much more visceral and much more dramatic to watch as they unfold. However, drought actually kills far more people every year than hurricanes or volcanoes. According to the United Nations Environmental Program, between 1972 and 1984, over 100,000 people died because of drought in the Sahel region of Africa. In that same time, 750,000 people became unable to grow crops and were therefore thrown harshly into foodless poverty where they were completely dependent on aid. 
This region of Africa stretches across the northern part of the continent, including such countries as Sudan, Nigeria, Algeria, Ethiopia, Mali and more. Unfortunately, this natural uncertainty and danger has become even more high risk in recent years due to global warming, and this instability also affects political violence in the region. What a mess. Anyone living in this region is bound to suffer because of drought, famine or limited water. According to the United Nations, an estimated 80% of the farmland in this region has already been degraded because of climate change. Temperatures are rising in this part of Africa one and a half times quicker than the rest of the world. Suffice to say, there are over 50 million people in this region who find themselves at risk of running out of food and water due to the harshness of the climate. This is not a place you want to live. Number 5. Naples, Italy Italy is a seriously beautiful country. It has fine wine, great food and mild temperatures. But in Naples, the threat of doom looms high over the city at all times. There is no need to go back over what happens to the neighbouring towns of Herculaneum and Pompeii back in 79 AD. Many have already learned about the destruction that Mount Vesuvius rained down upon the region. But what we're here to talk about today is why this is still one of the most dangerous places on Earth. Just because the volcano hasn't erupted dangerously in hundreds of years doesn't mean it can't happen again. In fact, the volcano could erupt at any time. It last erupted in 1944, causing damage to a number of buildings and killing almost 30 people. New research suggests the next time Mount Vesuvius erupts, it could be devastating. There is tons of boiling hot magma waiting underneath the mountain that would be spread across the region in the event of an eruption. If Mount Vesuvius were to experience an event like it did back in ancient times, you could expect to see flying rocks and ash at high speeds, choking and blinding dust, and ash that makes it impossible to breathe. If it erupted, it could mean serious devastation for the 3 million people in the danger zone. As for Naples itself, the city could be completely devastated by the fallout. While beautiful and serene as it is, I don't think I would be setting up shop in Naples under the shadow of the mountain. Would you? Let me know in the comments section below. Number 4. Norilsk, Russia The town is deep in Siberia and it's been called the worst place on earth to live. The name? Norilsk, Russia. The city is a double threat. It's incredibly hazardous because of the cold climate, which can reach freezing temperatures of up to minus 40 degrees, causing hypothermia and other horrible problems. Any city this cold is going to be dangerous to live, especially if you get caught outside for a little longer than expected. But the big threat of this place is more than natural. Norilsk is one of the most polluted cities on the planet, and it is located far in the Siberian lands of Russia. Who would have thought such a tiny frozen town could be so toxic? Because this town was a key component of Soviet industry back during the time of communism, it saw a lot of mining with few regulations, and since then, it has been a nightmare for the environment. Huge concentrations of copper and other elements in the atmosphere causes the sky over Norilsk to be constantly grey and gloomy, while toxic rain occasionally falls on the unfortunate residents. The water and air are both poison, and the rate of cancer among residents of this city is sky high. Though the disaster that is Norilsk is not natural in origin, this is still a miserable place to live. Number 3. Chemchem Group, Africa the Chemchem Group in Africa was once the most dangerous place on Earth. It's nothing but a dusty desert now, but millions of years ago this small region of what is now Western Africa, particularly near Eastern Morocco, was a battleground of terrifying magnitude. This was the most dangerous place to be alive on Earth in the far prehistoric past. Fossil evidence from this area dating back to around the late Cretaceous period suggests that this small area was home to dinosaurs, reptiles and other terrifying creatures. It was actually the most violent and dangerous place to have ever existed. Not because of natural disaster, but because of nature itself. Almost no animals could survive here for very long without being eaten by another carnivore. The study, documented on Science Alert, claims there were almost no herbivores in the area, and that the only animals that lived there were flesh eaters, and that they lived there in abundance. The area was like Jurassic Park, only it was real. It was full of life and death battles between predators and prey, and it was the place where a human time traveller wouldn't make it more than a few minutes before becoming a snack for a carnivorous beast. Number 2. Minkin County, China In Minkin County, China, the desert is encroaching on human civilization. There has been a drought going on in this region for over a decade, and because of this serious lack of water, the county of Minkin is now being turned into an infertile wasteland. This process is known as desertification, and it's actually costing China around $3 billion each year to try and avoid. This is one of the driest places in the entire country of China, and until recently, the county of Minkin had been the borderland between civilization and the brutal Tengur and Badain-Juran deserts. 
However, the deserts are now expected to engulf the county sometime in the next decade, which will make the entire region completely unlivable. Think of this place as being slowly swept over by sand. Crops are unable to grow, lakes and rivers are being dried, and horrible sandy winds are gradually burying the entire region in dust. In 2004 alone, they had to manually redirect water from the mighty Yellow River to fill the smaller Hong Tashan River here because it went completely dry. If they hadn't done, the loss of life would have been enormous. Worse still, groundwater resources are still drying up to this day. This is what it looks like when nature decides to take over civilization. There is literally no stopping it. Number 1. Maldives The Maldives has been a favourite luxury destination for years. Many Western tourists flock to the Maldives every year for beautiful beaches, pristine blue waters and a calming sense of tranquility. However, this is actually one of the most dangerous places in the world. The entire country is sinking, and it's sinking fast. According to a report by leading climatologists, the entire nation will be underwater and gone in approximately 80 years or less because of global warming. It's no longer a question of if the Maldives is threatened or not, but a matter of when exactly the last drop of water will swallow these islands into the sea. Although this doesn't appear threatening from the outside, and you probably won't find yourself drowning on your next vacation, it is extremely dangerous for all the people who live in the Maldives. It's going to happen, it's going to destroy their homes, and there is nothing they can do about it. They will simply have to evacuate when the time comes. And the Maldives is not actually the only nation currently under threat of flooding. Venice in Italy is one major city that could be underwater very soon, while many people predict that in the next 100 years, every major coastal city will see serious damage and destruction because of flooding. This is much more dangerous than living in the shadow of a volcano, and we need to prepare to withstand these major disasters as soon as possible. It's a worldwide emergency. Would you brave travelling to any of these dangerous locations? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you next time for another amazing video.